um, Guardian, and they talk about food banks, Norman, and people who use food banks. And think of, you know, the pride people have to swallow um, of using a, a food bank. Uh, they have to pluck up a lot of courage. They have to be in a desperate situation. What happens when they arrive at this particular one? Well, of course, just to say that food banks are used by people who are in full-time employment quite a lot these days as well. Mm. But this is a story about um, uh, sharks, I think, if I can call them that, who are private uh, parking operators who issued 22,000 tickets a day uh, to people for uh, allegedly parking where they shouldn't be parking, in this case, uh, wrongly, because this is a food bank in Sunderland. It's staffed by volunteers. There's a free car park owned by the charity, and yet the uh, company which has been in contracted to manage it, and a steering company called Smart Parking, I don't know who's uh, very smart about it, has been issuing tickets uh, for allegedly not being allowed to park there, though people are. Uh, £170 parking tickets. Now, the thing is, they've not been rescinded because the Guardian's got onto the company, but the thing is, if you are somebody who receives that ticket through the post, you may feel obliged to pay it because it's a threatening letter, effectively. It's demanding yeah. money with menaces. Yeah. And the other thing is, if you don't pay it, of course, these things double. Mm -hmm. So you pay it to stop it doubling. Yeah, and stop giving yourself a record, a credit Absolutely. mark and all that sort and of thing. And these are people who can't afford... They're going to a food yeah. bank for food and they're being asked £170 for a parking ticket. Yeah. Uh, private parking operators, otherwise known as sharks... Um, you know, I've been complaining about them for years. Nothing's ever done. They seem to be a necessary evil, uh, evil being the right word. But I, I always have this thing that we shouldn't be penalising people to park, okay, it's particularly the high street. We should be facilitating them. There should be wardens directing you and say, Miss Hardcastle, I can give you 15 minutes there in that space, but you'll really have to be out after that and you keep the traffic flowing. Something done with a smile on your face to facilitate people instead of this penalty, penalty type thing. Completely. And also the logical elements of, you know, bathrooms, toilet facilities in high streets. It drives me mad. I have been both the carer for an elderly person in a wheelchair and the mum of twins. And you have to think about practical elements. You've got to think about convenience. Pavements that have got un upturned paving stones or you can't actually cross the road safely. We need that kind of town planning mentality to be relevant to a generation that's living mm. yeah. in those places. We, we're not going to have an abundance of retail anymore. Our high streets cannot hang its hat on retail. It is going to be a social space, but yeah. we are social creatures by habit and we need yeah. those places to be. We've got an isolation crisis going on. Yeah. We can't get people back together. But yeah. then we talk about high streets and, you know, one of the things that have come up today apparently will be mentioned is more pavement cafes. Brilliant. We live in a fair weather country, you know. A lot of the time, we're not going to be able to facilitate and use mm. outdoor uh, seating, eating in, in environments. But we really do need to look at the fundamentals.